it's a circle. We're all the same and there isn't very much different about us. And I wish more people would understand that. I really do. And perhaps we'll grow to that point. But until then, we will have to persevere and art is one of the best ways to be able to illuminate and share and propagate that sort of unity, the possibility for unity, the way it could work, you know? Hello, I'm Steve Bernal and welcome to Energies, an exhibit of nine new paintings. I'm here at the Tiny Tea Ranch, the Molly Ivins Pavilion on a beautiful sunny afternoon and I'd like to share with you some new ideas. The first of which uh, I completed in January this year, 2021, and I entitled it The Shepherd Wasn't White because during that time of the year and uh, shortly before then, the end of 2020, uh, there was a great deal of unrest, racial tension, as many of you know, if, if not all of you, in fact, and uh, a lot of chaos in the world. And if I remember correctly, it was a time when the planet Jupiter was particularly bright in the sky, which either is or resembled the North Star in biblical times. And so I took it upon myself to do a, a sort of a religious, loosely religious themed painting. <laughs> and I made the crucifix the color of blood because it's the, it's the one thing we all have in common. All of our blood is the same color. And that to me is the essence of humanity, not necessarily the color of your skin or your beliefs or your inclinations, but the color of your blood makes everybody, everyone the same. I suspended it from a, from a little wire from a precarious vine in that night light. Well, it just seemed like a good idea. <laughs> it just seemed like everything was being suspended and everything was so precarious in the world. And gravity is another commonality that we all have. And the motion of this piece, to me anyway, in my mind, is that everything is being pulled to the ground, to be grounded. And if a plant or a vine could speak, it would through this trumpet idea that I have, which to me equates the vociferous human inclination, especially during this time and that time. And there you have, the shepherd wasn't white. And on a more inner personal note, at times I have very vivid dreams that I'm able to remember pretty accurately. And for those of you online and social media, uh, I occasionally put some of the good ones on my Facebook page <laughs> in detail. And just because I think it's kind of entertaining and in light of uh, the other events in the world, it seems lighthearted. And this one is entitled, Sleeping Dreams Told at Waking. Again, it's just a visualization of what I feel and what I see. For example, the white bulbous character here is the fruit of the dream, the beginning of the dream, the idea being put forth into the reverberating night, which leads to a sunrise. And then the figure is sort of nondescript and vague, much like the way I feel right as I'm opening my eyes every morning. And not being a morning person, <laughs> it takes a little effort sometimes. And sometimes it feels like the dream is gradually releasing me into the world. And there we have sleeping dreams told at waking. Another idea I had recently was something about red shapes. It might've come to me in a dream. It might've come to me just randomly, but one of my favorite things, of many favorite things about making art and living as an artist is I'm able to transmit and share my vague, strange ideas. And I just had a, an idea for a piece of circles encircling themselves and being wrapped in other circles, in other bands. This, the name of this piece is Bands. And on a further sort of anecdotal personal note, I have played a lot of music in bands in my life. And uh, so there's a little bit of a play on words, a pun, <laughs> if you will. And uh, 
there we have bands. The idea for this piece came about after waking one morning and I had the idea to do a self-portrait, which I had never done before and um, may never do again, but <laughs> I'm glad I did. And it's, um, as you can tell, it's sort of a younger version of myself, I guess. And the symbolism in the image, in the picture is, well, multifaceted, I guess. There's, there are some things there. The scroll representing things I've learned, I suppose. The orb representing motion and rotational force of life, I guess. Uh, motivation and propagation, if you will. The flowing of so. As opposed to doing a full body, I wanted to do something a little different. And it seems to me that the pelvis is a very, you know, central portion of the human body that propagates everything else. You know, we walk and ride bikes and run and sit and stand at the crux of the pelvis. And I just became fascinated with that region. <laughs> and instead of making, you know, organs and guts, I made something that I thought was a little more simple, <laughs> but yet dimensional and depicting the flesh and the blood and the flow of organic life that we all have. Again, our commonality and, you know, emitting upward the energy of ourselves and everybody's heart. Everybody has a heart. Uh, I put myself in a blue work shirt because I, that's, I, I like blue work shirts. And I put myself behind a door or window emerging or withdrawing. I can go either way with this, you know? There's a, an environment behind me that is vague, but kind of dark, and there's some space there. And uh, I could either be coming or going. Like I said in my previous video, my previous exhibit, I have a thing for tubes and circles. And so I put one at the top of the picture because I like tubes and circles. <laughs> And there's a little bit of motion, there's a little bit of fluid, it's moist, it's wet, it's flowing. There's something going there, or something had gone, or something's coming. Again, the propagation of motion is uh, what interests me in this next series that I'm going to share with you. The next one I called Eden. As I was embarking on this series of what I call portraits, they're not necessarily of any actual persons. But after doing my self-portrait, I, I became interested in the human form a little more than I had been before. So I started studying anatomy and uh, facial structures, skeletal structures, and ethnicities, and uh, features specific to different ethnicities. And uh, in this case of Eden, I wanted to depict a Persian shape. I've known several friends from the region of Iraq and Iran and Lebanon uh, and Syria and they have specific facial shapes and features and that's something I just wanted to explore and I think I, I think I got it you know and she is very peaceful and everything is okay you know she's observing but from a place of respite and again, I wanted to make, make it as if she's in a window or a door, a place of observing, you know, from which to observe, a perch, perhaps. Which led me to this piece I entitled Enlightening. Um, again, there are so many things that instigate ideas for me sometimes, and they come from the weirdest sort of places and, and the weirdest objects and just things that I see for a moment and remember. And I'm sure that's common with many artists and, and this is what we do. But at the risk of, you know, uh, time dating or limiting a piece of art to a, to a, you know, a specific modernity, for example, I, I wanted an, a source of electricity and 
a light bulb to illuminate a character who in this case, again, in my studies of uh, ethnic features, ethnicities, and, and skeletal features and anatomy, uh, I made him uh, either, you, he could either be Native American or, or Asian uh, from my perspective, in my opinion. And uh, what I've learned also is that Native Americans and Asians are closely related, genetically speaking. And the combination of the colors in this one, I want it to be very warm, hot even, on the outer corners and more cool and bright and almost transparent towards the middle to illuminate him in such a way that you know he's either emerging into it and trying to to tolerate it and and go through something that's very bright for him or he's withdrawing because it's so bright into the dark space behind him the 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 ambience behind him, which of course, again, is, is dark. And there we have enlightening. Pretty happy with that light bulb. <laughs> which brings us to the piece I call Emperor. Uh, as far as ethnicity and facial structure, etc., etc., genetic proclivities, he's distinctly European and at this point in my series, in the process of making the series, I had not done just a straight profile of a figure. So I decided to attempt it, and, and here we have it. Again, in a window with a space behind him, and the space in front is being illuminated from the right side of the picture. It's a very simple, straightforward sort of piece, I think, to me anyway. And and I wanted to feature his jugular vein, again, to, to illuminate uh, the force of life that we all share. And so there we have it. And that's what led to the shading of the blue. You know, I, I did the, you know, he's an emperor, so he's a blue blood, <laughs> if you will. And you can, you know, you can see the vein. And, and so he's surrounded by his life force. Uh, I wanted to feature the frame of the window in this one to be as if it had a motion, a propagation of movement uh, in one way or the other, or both ways. And so there we have Emperor. As I worked through the process of these portraits and uh, this series, if you'll notice, all of them, except for the first one, I guess, uh, are bald. And one of the things I wanted to eliminate in my work in this series was um, not only that we all have the same color blood, um, we are all human, we have much more in common than differences. Something else that's occurring in modern society is a blending of genders, you know, not only a blending of ethnicities and the blending uh, uh, and interaction of, of races uh, of people. Uh, but I've come to notice uh, young people describing themselves as non-binary, for example. And I know that when I was a teenager, my biggest uh, objective was making sure I could get my hands on $5.99 to buy the next Led Zeppelin record. <laughs> Kids these days, have many more things with which to deal. And um, this piece I call Eve, and yes, she is ostensibly female, but there is something else happening in that she's, she's pulling away and grasping at the same time. And, uh, and the frame is, the frame of the window that she's behind is a little more expressive. It has its own expression which I believe is a part of growing up in the modern world. Just from my own observation, of course, I'm much older than any teenager alive right now, but uh, I can observe and try to interpret what a young person might be dealing with and what they're going through. And it's much more complicated, like I said, than what I had to deal with at that age. But she's in the throes of something that is basically pretty happy. <laughs> 
and yet she's behind a very complex frame of a window through which she's trying to emerge. And I think she's doing a good job of it. And uh, it's, a, it's sort of a, an encapsulation of what I think youth is dealing with today in the modern world. And so we have Eve. Which brings us to the last piece in the series, uh, what I call Easter Island. It's a place with which I've been fascinated for a long time and uh, I hope someday to visit. It's, uh, I guess you could call it one of my bucket list items. I would love to experience that place in person uh, someday. But in the meantime, uh, I had been doing a little reading about it recently and uh, it gave me an idea for another piece in the series. And again, studying a little bit of uh, ethnicity and features, ethnic features in humans, you know, the differences and the similarities. I took it upon myself to uh, paint a person of color. And in my opinion, he and or she is, you know, of island persuasion. Uh, Indonesian perhaps, Polynesian, uh, Tahitian maybe, but Easter Island is a very isolated place. If I remember correctly, it's the most isolated island in the world. Uh, either that or St. Helene, I forget which one it is. At any rate, the culture there is very mysterious and I wanted to give her a sense of that, you know, and, and I hope I, I made that work. And I knew this one was going to be the last in the series of these nine paintings for this exhibit, which is why I gave her the frame of a very crimson sort of blood red color. Um, I wanted it to tie in somehow with the first piece that I described, which was uh, the shepherd wasn't white with the crucifix, the color of blood. And so there we have it, you know, it's, it's a circle. We're all the same and there isn't very much different about us. And I wish more people would understand that. I really do. And <clears throat> perhaps we'll grow to that point. But until then, we will have to persevere and art is one of the best ways to be able to illuminate and share and propagate that sort of unity, the possibility for unity, the way it could work, you know? I'm Mexican-American. I did all of these paintings. One person did all these paintings. I'm, I had the same idea for each one of them. Uh, and in my opinion, that's a type of unity. It's a type of solidarity, I guess, a type of similarity. It's a source of similarity. It's a point of similarity that we all can share. And I wish we would more often and more openly and more freely than we are currently. And perhaps, as I said, perhaps we will grow to that. And on a little bit of a more modernist and lighter note, something else early in this series that I had the idea about one of the developments in the evolution of modern humanity is that because of pan the pandemic, because of social conditions, and also because we have te this technology that allows this, we collaborate remotely. We try to do things together, yet we are apart, sometimes very far apart, you know, uh, miles apart, continents apart, uh, through Zoom meetings. Everybody has their Zoom window on their computer or their phone or whatever device you may, you may choose. So I put individual figures behind windows to exemplify my perception of how humans are communicating to a large degree and collaborating in a remote way. Mainly because at the moment still we have to 
and we should. Um, and I think it's another phase in, in the evolution of humanity in that it's also a new standard. It will be there for a long time. The communication through, for example, Zoom meetings. And so there we have it. Energies. Thank you uh, for watching. And uh, my contact information will be posted at the end of this video. And uh, feel free to email or call anytime and uh, for any information about pricing and shipment and installation and uh, or a new commission, a custom commission. I would be happy to share that with you. And you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram anytime. Thanks for watching.